Hey guys, Squeeve the Lazy Geek here, and today I want to talk about this little mount, uh, the Crooks 140 Traveler, uh, which I have given first impressions about in a previous video, um, with the main characteristic of this mount that is that you can put a freaking C9.25 on top of it with no counterweights, although it's not recommended, with no counterweights and it will slew it around like it's nothing. Obviously you need a very beefy tripod for that to work, but it is quite uh, impressive to see. And this is the reason why I had bought uh, this mount in the first place. It has uh, harmonic drives, or, um, or strain wave drives, in there that uh, have a lot of torque and basically do not require candlewaits for astrophotography. So for a portable, portable mount, so this thing is only three kilos with the tripod is maybe six kilos. The, this whole setup here is around seven, eight kilos. So it's not a lot at all. This is actually something that is transportable. And um, it's like the concept of this is absolutely amazing. And there are um, two main com competing brands on the market of harmonic drives. There is Hobim, who makes this mount, and there is, um, what's the name? Rainbow Astro, there is, that makes uh, the um, another series of mount, I don't know if they have a name, one of them is the RST-135, which is kind of like the counterpart to this one. My understanding, I'm not completely sure, is that those two companies actually originally were one company that split into two for some reason, meaning that uh, their mounts are very similar, but they're slowly starting to diverge. Uh, now this particular mount, the Crux 140 Traveler, and um, it's very recent. It's been released like a few months ago. I was, I bought it uh, back in March. And if you've watched my review, and you should watch my review, if you want to see this huge beast on top of this tiny little cute thing just being slewed around, that's not something you see every day, uh, feel free to go and watch my uh, initial impressions of, um, of that mount. But, as you will see at the end of my initial impressions, one of the things that left me like wanting more or that was like making me feel very conflicted about this mount was, was the precision of uh, the mount itself when tracking stars and when guiding. And um, I was seeing a lot of what appeared to be backlash in the declination axis, except that it's like sometimes it would there was no backlash at first, and then suddenly the, it stopped moving, and then it started moving again. It was like a lot of weird behavior, especially in declination. And um, talking with multiple people, including like um, a reseller in France, I learned that you know it's uh, that maybe my mount in particular had an issue. So I sent it back to the Japanese seller, and uh, the Japanese seller. I basically tested it against uh, two other mounts, uh, two other crux mounts, and he found what appeared to be a great workaround, which was that simply um, I had uh, I had you had to unbalance the declination axis. If the declination axis was unbalanced, you'd get almost no backlash. And I remember he tried. He sh showed me a video where he tried that with a nine times sidereal speed, uh, um, which is like not exactly guiding guide speed, which is 0 0.9 at most, it's 10 times more, but it seemed very convincing. So I got the mount back with no modifications made to it. And I unbalanced the, pay the payload in both RA and deck. And I tested it inside because we have had very poor weather during the rainy season here in Tokyo. And what I saw and I'll, I'll be putting like um, a video of that as I speak, I saw the mount especially in deck when I was reversing directions at very low speed, so at one point something uh, sidereal speed, the deck axis would jump. So it would stop and then big jump and I could actually hear a click from the mount. So stop, big jump, stop again, big jump again, you hear the click again. And I was like, okay, so maybe I've unbalanced my payload too much. So I balanced the payload again and it was still there. And then I'm like, so, okay, wait, what is happening? And so I moved uh, the, the mount, I, I, I uh, made it point to another direction and I tried again and there was no problem. And I was like, okay, did I dream this? And then I pointed it in yet another direction 
And a similar problem was there, except it was not exactly the same. It's as if like you had variable backlash depending on the angle of the mount and you know the, the way your payload is distributed and uh, whether it's the full moon uh, and whether you know Jupiter is uh, in the constellation Sagittarius or not. You know, I mean, it, it, it was completely incomprehensible. And I want to love this mount so much because I cannot stress has, has how beautifully made it is. It is a beautiful mount. It's virtually silent when it's uh, slewing. Uh, it, it's, it's such a beauty. It is such a beauty. And, and so I've spent, I, I, was, I couldn't believe myself. I couldn't believe what I saw. I wanted it to work so badly. I tested it for hours and hours and hours. And uh, in the end, what, what really broke the camel's back for me was I saw once, uh, and actually two times, I saw the same type of jump in RA. Now in RA, when you're, when you're tracking stars, you only go in one direction. If you want to go in the other direction, you just pause the drive and the Earth's rotation will do the rest. Um, so it's not a problem, but it just irked me that I saw the same behavior, even though much less frequently in RA, uh, but I saw the same behavior. And this is testing with this little cute tiny piece of equipment, which is like 1.5 kilos. So it's not like I'm stressing the mount or anything. Um, and I, I, I tried with multiple power supplies. I tried you know, multiple ways to, to see what, what made the mount perform like that. And I did not know. I could not find out. And I got reports from others from the Crux Facebook forums that they had a similar issue. Um, I, I've heard from others as well that sometimes they have absolutely awesome nights with this mount. And then the following night, it just doesn't, doesn't track well. Which means that to me, this mount, it's still a gem. It's still beautiful. It's still amazing. And I, uh, it has so much potential, but it is not something that I want to use because I am after maximum laziness. And the moment you put a random element in that, that I have very little to no way of controlling, the whole laziness as aspect is destroyed. And this is why I asked the Japanese reseller to uh, whether I could return the mount. And uh, just yesterday or the day before yesterday, I don't remember, I got an email saying, okay, uh, you, can, uh, you can return the mount, which is what I'm gonna do. So I have obviously the moment I got that email, I stopped touching the mount. So I haven't touched it since uh, it's been approved for a return because I don't consider it as my mount anymore. It's gonna be get returned. So. Um, the moment I finish taking this video, I'll be uh, disassembling everything and putting uh, everything back in the box. Uh, but you can imagine how I'm, I'm, I am so disappointed because it has so much potential. And I think for a lot of people, it can work very well. And um, I've been asked by others like, OK, how about the RST-135, which is from uh, Hobbim's competitor, Rainbow Astro? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm getting the feeling that all of those uh, strain wave gear mounts, they're so new. It's such a new concept that every user is a beta tester. But I've heard more positive feedback about the RST than I have. Well, no, that's not accurate, actually. I heard very positive feedback about both the RST and the Crux uh, before I, I bought it and after I bought it. And maybe my mount, my sample is wrong. Maybe indeed, as the French reseller was telling me, um, my, especially my declination axis has an issue. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but then even the RA axis, you know, had, I, I found that jump at least once. And when I tried it at roughly 20 times speed, um, in one direction, it was just as smooth as usual. And then the other direction, it let out a coffee grinder sound. And prepare your ears because you're going to listen to it now. Ah, isn't that lovely? Um, yeah, so I was like, what is this? So of course, it doesn't affect tracking. It doesn't affect anything, but it doesn't give me a good feeling, obviously. Um, and so for me, I'm going to avoid Harmonix train drives for now. I cannot recommend to anyone else that has been my personal experience based on a single sample of this mount, which may actually be defective. 
who knows? Uh, maybe others have just gotten better samples. Um, maybe I was unlucky. And similar maybe for the RST mounts, there's something uh, similar going on. They do have the uh, common point that you need to drive at a very high frequency. That says 0.5 second frequency is what is often recommended for both mounts. But so it is for other types of like new type of mounts like the Avalon M0, which has very high, which is highly reg regarded. And plus there is um, a new or uh, a guiding uh, algorithm that's in beta, I think in PhD2 called, um, what is it, Z filter, I think that it, which is made exactly for this kind of mount that requires high frequency guiding. And so, yeah, my conclusion is I am going to return the mount. I cannot say whether I recommend or not recommend it. For me, it didn't work out. Um, I am still going to, you know, leave a link down below uh, with my um, my newly sold soul. If you, despite this, you still want to buy this mount, um, you know, and if you do buy the mount, please use the link down below if you want to support me, as this is an affili affiliate link with uh, OPT Corp. Um, but otherwise. Uh, I personally would not buy this mount again. And I thought about getting the RST-135 and I, I decided against it. Because even though I've seen many people have pos positive experiences with it, I don't want to take the risk again. And um, I'll probably, you know, I still need a mount that I can carry around. So I might actually buy the AZ, A, AZ GTI from Skywatcher again because I sold my old one when I bought this mount. I also bought this tripod just for this mount. So it's like, I have so much invested. This is not a cheap tripod. So I have so much invested in this mount. Uh, but yeah, I'll have to find a way to reuse that investment. So I'm thinking about the a AZ GTI, which if you get a good sample through the lottery of buying a new mount, might actually work very well for astrophotography for light payloads like this one, or might go for something like Ioptron. Ioptron is tempting me a lot uh, with like uh, SEM25 or SEM40 or even SEM70. SEM70 wouldn't be portable, but maybe I could get the SEM70 and compare it to my EQ6R and whichever wins I'll be keeping and the other one I'll be selling, you know? <laughs> weird stuff. Uh, but uh, more likely, I'll probably go for the same SEM uh, 25P uh, because it is a relatively small mount and it doesn't weigh that much. So um, I think that's pretty much it for this video. So if you have any recommendations about which portal ma portable mount you would be recommending for me, please let me know in the comments down below. So as I was saying right now, I'm looking at the AZ GTI, which I know can work for light payloads, or maybe the SEM 25P, or maybe even the same for the SEM 40, uh, because I know it, can, it could support potentially my Newtonian as well. So it, it would be great for like a go out of town kind of, uh, kind of mount to replace this beautiful, I cannot stress how beautiful this mount is and how impressed I am by it. And I am so disappointed that I'm not able to use it to its full potential. I want to be able to have it as like almost my daily driver, you know, uh, but it was not meant to be. And you can tell from my very like sad tone of voice, I'm not as energetic as I usually am in my videos that, oh, I feel so bad about it. And honestly, I feel so bad about, you know, um, having even like made the, the resellers jump through hoops to get like other mounts, uh, other samples of that mount to compare it to and then returning it in the end, I feel terrible. Uh, but I'm, maybe I'm too nice, but such is uh, the way of things. So I'll be packing it up and I'll be returning it. And that's pretty much the end of my saga with the Crux 140 Traveler, at least for now. So with that, I hope that this video has been useful uh, to you. If it was, please feel free to leave a comment down below to click on the like button if you like this video. Um, also, if you are not subscribed to this channel and you like this type of content, whether I'm reviewing gear, giving my honest impressions about stuff, or whether I am showing how to assemble some equipment, use picks and sights, or uh, explaining gain and offset, and there's noise in astrophotography, all that kinds of stuff. I have tons of contents on that. So if that interests you, please consider subscribing down below. Please consider clicking a little bell icon to be notified when I have a new video coming up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Um, and you know, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars 
and I'll see you next time.